everyone's here. And if anything that you hear today resonates with you or you're curious about it, don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, you know, get involved. There's a chapter here. We need all of you. This is not just us. We need every person. We need, you don't have to fully devote yourself to this. This doesn't have to be your life. Everyone's doing a little bit. Everyone's doing what they can. And I mean, it's beautiful. We've, we've made so much progress in the past couple of years and we are always looking for, for new people, more help, uh, good energy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, how many, has anyone here been to the protests in, at City Hall? Yes, okay, so you guys know. You guys know what's going on. I don't really have much else to say. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You guys are beautiful. Thank you so much. I was actually curious, yeah, I was actually curious about what went on down there. Last I heard, he said there were 700 people that were camped down there as of last weekend. And we actually have several people that are going to be taking some materials here to go down there. So I'm, as things progress, I'm sure we'll have more interaction with that group. Part of it, too, is uh, both Peter and Jason spoke at one of the functions, I think, on a Saturday. And there was a discussion about having one of the town halls actually there at that location. So we'll see how that that pans out. But we're in communication, and sometimes it takes, everyone's on a learning curve with a lot of this, ourselves included. So, Mr. Lord, are you ready? It's nice, it's cool. <laughs> And just so you know, we did play with the thermostat. We did try to. <laughs> I think it has one of those override functions where it's just like push it all you want. <laughs> it's not going to do a thing. Pardon? Well, look who just walked in the room. I think she's busy right now, but we also have one of the state coordinators here, Jen Wilding. I'm sorry, U.S. coordinator. My mistake. And. I know she just walked in and she's busy and she's trying to settle in, but just so you know, she's in the house. And the reason I mention this, again, if you picked up the flyers, you'll see the names in there. They'll start to become familiar. There's also email addresses if you're interested, if you have questions or anything you want to follow up with. And additionally, there is registration cards if you're interested in the email out as far as information that's coming through. There is or has been a current redesign for those of you who are familiar with the global site, which is where we point most people. So if you haven't looked there recently, please take a minute and take a look. You'll find a lot of information, uh, as we say, on the feed out coming this way. Because there's so much going on in the world. Okay, we're just testing. Isn't this That's fun? What we're looking for. Oh, this is really nice. <laughs> Am I fluorescing? Okay, great. I'm actually wrapping here. I'm looking for Jason to do his presentation. All right. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Jason Lord. I volunteer to coordinate the Zeitgeist Movement chapters here in California. Um, and I've got a MacBook that won't wake up in front of me. Hang on a second. <clears throat> what did I do? <laughs> oh, you need to uh, enter your password. So, all right, while he does that, um, the town hall meetings have basically been our, thank you, uh, a way for us to, to open up these ideas to the public and start engaging you guys in questions and answers about, especially if you're identifying uh, issues with the social structure and the outcomes that we're dealing with all the time with the poverty and the warfare and the debt and the unemployment and not enough health insurance and things like that. So, um, tonight, um, I threw together a few slides and I just wanted to go over a couple of things about the Zeitgeist Movement as far as the direction that we advocate. So I'm going to get this going and up on the screen first and then I'm going to uh, dim these laser beams that are blinding me uh, so I can actually deliver this to you guys. Um, the visuals will be more important than looking at me so I'm actually kind of glad I'll get to turn the lights off. Let's see here. One second. All right. You can see that, so. It's the bottom. Just, just tap the green light, you should go off. 
No? Yeah? One second. Technical. There. So, now we can see. Um, and if there's someone uh, who could just keep an eye on the door if people come in and help them to a seat, I know it's probably a little bit dark back there. Um, that'll be great. But uh, in case you guys do have to get out of here, the green exit signs are lit up. So <clears throat> uh, hopefully that'll help guide you right out in case you have to step out during this. This will be about 15 minutes. Um, the name of this presentation is visual, Visualizing a Systems Approach. This is a single aspect regarding the direction advocated by the Zeitgeist Movement. And of interest to me since it's a key factor in understanding human decision making and problem solving beyond the political sphere. As you go through the materials we often reference, you will come across many, many terms and phrases that sound impressive and are actually fun to say. Uh, some examples of this would be a resource-based economic model, technological unemployment, dynamic equilibrium, the scientific method for social concern, a systems approach to resource management, along with many others. We spend a lot of time in the movement speaking about the root causes to persistent problems of so social operation on the planet, especially in regard to the more notable negative outcomes such as crime, poverty, war, pollution, debt, and other forms of corruption. While it's logical to understand the problems first, we can sometimes miss the focus on aspects of the solutions we propose, even though there is plenty of information available. At the foundation of what the movement advocates <clears throat> is a global system which can be termed a resource-based economy, made known to many of us by the work of the Venus Project in Venus, Florida. A resource-based economic model is a social structure that is global in its operation based entirely on the Earth's resources as a starting point for societal decision making. Where all goods and services are available without the use of currency, credit, barter, or any form of debt or servitude. All social and industrial operations are arranged in what we call a systems approach, which logically treats the planet Earth as a single system it happens to be. We also advocate the application of technology to the automation of labor to free humanity from the mundane and arbitrary occupational roles which have no true relevance for social well-being. And at the end of the day, we want to encourage a new value and incentive system through this social design which maintains a focus on attributes such as community, human well-being, relevant education, social awareness, and creativity. That's as far as I'm going to go into the overall direction since it's far too much information to share with you tonight. Instead, I wish to spend a few minutes visualizing a core attribute of this model to give us a working understanding of one piece of the technical jargon. The attribute of focus in this presentation will be a systems approach. Our relationship to the Earth and the environments we live in is not a political issue or a religious ideal. It is a technical relationship. Separate a living organism from its surroundings and it will die from a lack of oxygen, water, and food. Organisms are open systems. They cannot survive without continuously exchanging matter and energy with their environment. Since we observe systems interacting with each other as part of a whole, it is then logical to start with the unifying system of the biosphere in which we all inhabit. Systems thinking can be defined as an approach to problem solving by viewing problems as part of the overall system rather than reacting to individual problems as isolated or unrelated phenomena from the larger order. When taking is separate, such patchwork notions may further the development of unintended consequences, such as trying to resolve the problems of monetary inflation with more inflation or trying to fight the destruction of the rainforests or the increase in plastic waste in our oceans by more laws and legislation rather than addressing the cause of the behavior to begin with. Systems thinking is not one thing but a set of habits or practices within a framework that is based on the principle that the component parts of a system are best understood in the context of relationships rather than in isolation from one another. So this brings us to an attribute that is often mentioned which is a systems approach. A systems approach to resource management on the planet is comprised of real-time data and statistics. This approach, combined with the attributes of peak efficiency, strategic preservation, and conservation become necessary components to what we would call a sustainable society. The process of unfolding, which you may call decision-making, is based on natural law and reason, not on political ideologies or religious notions or a group's opinion. 
When using a systems approach, we are arriving at decisions as opposed to making them. Making a decision is a subjective act, often based on incomplete information or affected by one's cultural bias. Our goal is to remove the basis of one's opinion as best we can by using the most up-to-date knowledge we have to align with natural processes to the best of our abilities at a given time. This is an emergent process because the body of knowledge of human understanding changes over time as new discoveries are made. There is no final frontier. So human management of the environmental equilibrium on this planet, which is an initial variable to how well society functions, comes first from understanding what the carrying capacity of the Earth actually is. It follows that the needs of the human population must be in balance with the resources of the Earth or negative outcomes occur.